If you were born before the year 1984, you may remember a little candy bar called the PB Max. Well, guess what? I've created a homemade version. Get ready for a blast from the past. What is up, you guys? It's Carly here, and you are officially cooking with Carly. PB Max, let's talk about them. To be honest, they were discontinued when I was two years old. They were discontinued in 1994 and they only ran for a couple of years. I know this because I have done extensive research on the PB Max over the last three days, all because my brother-in-law, Brett, has been dropping subtle hints that he would really like a copycat recipe and apparently brother-in-laws get priority in the recipe development in my kitchen. So the candy bar itself has this crunchy, cookie type layer and it's a whole grain cookie on the bottom and then there's a creamy peanut butter filling on top with little crunchy bits on top of the peanut butter and then all of that is dunked in milk chocolate and let me tell you i've made a few batches of these now testing this recipe out these are delicious i've had them my family has devoured them and now it is your turn to make yourself some PB Max in your kitchen. To start, we're going to begin making that cookie base. We're using one half cup of softened butter and our brown sugar. It's equal parts butter and sugar, so one half cup of each, and we're just going to mix this together with a hand mixer. And actually, a hand mixer is much better for this recipe than a stand mixer is. We want to mix this butter and brown sugar until it is well combined and smooth and there's no butter chunks and there's no chunks of dry brown sugar. Next goes in our wet ingredients, so a teaspoon of vanilla and one egg. And mix this until well combined again. Lastly, the whole wheat flour, and this is baking powder that will go in. So it's one teaspoon of baking powder and one and a half cups of whole wheat flour. We're just going to mix this until everything is combined. And we want to use this mixer because it won't bring the dough together into like a big ball like your stand mixer will. It will bring it together, but they will be in little tiny balls. You'll see, and this is how we're going to bake the top of the PB Max. So now we're going to separate this out half and half. Half of the dough here we're going to crumble on half of a pan and the other half we're going to roll out and cut our cookie bases. Let's roll the rest of this dough out for our cookie bases. I'm going to grab some flour to flour my counter so it doesn't stick. So just like you would roll out sugar cookies, that's how we are going to roll this dough out. Try to keep the dough in as much of a rectangle as you can. You want to roll the dough out until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. You can do it a little thicker if you want. That's just kind of personal preference. Now that it's rolled out, I'm going to grab a pizza cutter and just cut this into squares. If you have a square cookie cutter though, that would be a really easy way to get perfect squares. I don't for some reason, as weird as that is. So I'm just going to use my cookie cutter. I'm going to use a fork to poke some holes in the cookie so that they don't puff up while we bake them. All right, I'm going to transfer these to this pan and we will get to baking these. Now these won't spread much, if at all, while they're baking, so it's okay to get them real snug on the pan. And any extra dough, any scraps, can be crumbled for the topping. Now we want these to be baked until they are crackery. Crackery. They're going to be hard, not soft at all. So they're going in the oven, 350 degrees, for 15 to 20 minutes. You don't want them to burn, but you wanna make sure that it is crackery and hard. If you haven't already, make sure to give me a thumbs up on this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my other wonderful dessert creations and hit that notification bell so you get a notification every time I publish a new video and even better, share with a friend who loves PB Max just as much as you did. So this is what our pan looks like and it's going into the oven for 15 or 20 minutes. I'm going to set my timer for 15. Let's check them. 
Thinking they're gonna need to go about 20 though. While those guys are in the oven, let's get working on the peanut butter filling. So what we need for the peanut butter filling is equal parts peanut butter to powdered sugar. We've got two thirds of a cup of each here. And we're just going to mix them together. So two thirds of a cup peanut butter and two thirds of a cup powdered sugar. Let's mix this together until it is well combined. Start with your speed on low or else the powdered sugar will go flying everywhere until it's almost combined or mostly combined. And then you can pick up the speed a little bit. Now we're going to just set this aside until the cookies and the crumbles come out of the oven and they cool completely. Okay, they just came out of the oven and it took 20 minutes for mine to bake until I could tell that they, when you fill them, you can tell that they're no longer, you know, soft when you touch them. If you roll yours thinner than mine, they won't take as long to get, you know, crackery. But 20 minutes was perfect for me. Okay, they're out of the oven. They're cool. They're hard. And they're ready for the peanut butter topping. So I'm going to grab a knife and we're just going to spread a generous amount of this peanut butter topping onto our cookie base. And I like to make a dome in the middle and push down on the side so no peanut butter is overlapping the sides. You want it to meet up nicely with the sides. And once you have that nice peanut butter dome, we're going to take these crumbles and push them into the top. Let's cover the entire top of the peanut butter. Okay, once the top is covered with the crumbles, I'm going to set this onto a, a plate or a pan and repeat with the rest of the cookie bases, and then they're going to go in the freezer. I'm going to toss these in the freezer to get that peanut butter nice and chilled while I melt the chocolate chips. This chocolate, I'm just using my favorite chocolate and classically the PB Max has milk chocolate covering it. So these are my favorite milk chocolate chips. I'm going to go ahead and melt these. If you are interested in melting your chocolate in your Instant Pot like I do, you can watch my video here to learn how to do that. One of the main reasons why I like to use my Instant Pot when dipping things in chocolate is because once it's melted, you can turn your Instant Pot on to keep warm and it keeps your chocolate melted for as long as you need it. No more rushing and trying to get things dipped as fast as possible. So my chocolate is nice and melted now and the PB Maxes are in the freezer. They're nice and cool now. I'm gonna pull them out and we're going to dunk these in chocolate, finish them off. The PB Max bars are out of the freezer. You can't even push in the peanut butter and that is exactly how we want it. I've got a parchment paper lined cookie sheet here. You can use a silicone baking mat if you'd like. That just makes it so once the PB Max bars are coated in chocolate and cooled, they peel off nice and easy. So let's dunk the bars into the chocolate. I'm going to put the bottom in first and then roll them. Now you can just let these sit on the counter until they set up and the chocolate is no longer melty, but I'm gonna put them back in the freezer to speed up this process. Alrighty, here we have our very own PB Max bars. Got the classic chocolate look with the bubbly top. And this is what it looks like on the inside. We've got chocolate covering the entire bar with our cookie layer on the bottom, the mound of peanut butter on top with the crunchy, cookie bits on top of the peanut butter. Now, if you would all do me the honor of thanking Brett in the comments below for, the, for this recipe, the inspiration, the encouragement to do the research, I would really appreciate it. Let's hear it. Thank you, Brett. So the conclusion to my experiment is this. Although I was only two years old when they discontinued making the PB Max bars, this has got to be one of the best desserts or treats that I have ever tasted. Whether or not you've ever had a real PB Max, you have got to try this copycat version. 
it's not going to disappoint.